So first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. So Elrugu Swagata, thank you very much for coming. So you could have been doing anything else right now, Sunday evening. You could have been doing anything else with your family or going anywhere. But then you're here. But you're all here. So first of all, I would like to acknowledge you that uh, thank you very much for coming. Hare Krishna. Okay. So now in this chapter, we're going to learn something very interesting. Um, so tell me something like, how many of you would like to understand <clears throat> what is the purpose of the Vedas? How many of you want to understand that? Please raise your hands. How many of you want to understand the purpose of Vedas? How many of you don't want to understand the purpose of Vedas? Please raise your hands. Okay. So today's uh, chapter will be very interesting because we will understand by the end of this chapter, we'll understand what is the purpose of the Vedas, why these Vedas are there, right? So we will start the program. So first of all, let us pay our respectful obeisances to the deities of this Shatri Puram. So this is Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadramai, we have Lord Narsima and Radha Bengalurishwar and Gaurvitai. Girigo Vardhan, Panchatattva and all the Guru Parampara will pay our businesses. So she, she, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadramai ki, Chayan. So before starting any program, we start with prayers, okay? There's a lot of meaning to these prayers. It says, Om Ajnana Timirandhasya 
ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಚನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ಮೀನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎನಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆರ್ ಎನಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಪೇ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ದ ಗುರು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಗುರು ಈ ವಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಗುರು ಆಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ so we should become humble in front of the guru and we should say i was in ignorance oh magnana timira and i was in ignorance gnananjana shalaka that means guru gives us the eyes to see the knowledge so we get the eyes to see the knowledge if guru gives us the knowledge chakshurun militam ena tasmay shri gurave nam and the next one is the praupad pranam mantra nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ರಿಪೀಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೆಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಶ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ he institutionalized this guru parampara it's not that the guru parampara started in 1966 this traces back this con traces back to its roots uh, to whom any guesses what is the root of his con chaitanya mahaprabhu still more if you have to go backwards what is huh? madhvacharya still if you go backwards that's 1000 years ago ಜಯ ನಾರದ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅನ್ ಅನ್ಬ್ರೋಕನ್ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಪ್ಯಾಕೇಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ that is krishna consciousness bhagavad gita is not spoken 5000 years ago this bhagavad gita bhagavad gita krishna spoke it to sun god it's very very old okay so that's the knowledge so in one lecture prabhupada asks uh, why don't we take the old knowledge why why we should not take the old knowledge is sleeping new activity is uh, eating a new activity anything new in eating sleeping is there any new activity in uh, uh, getting disease you know getting suffering is there anything new is the same thing then why we should not accept the oldest uh, knowledge by perfect knowledge by krishna isn't it so we are inspired by his holiness jayapataka swami maharaj spiritual master governing body commission member minister of congregational development so uh, he is also our spiritual master so guru maharaj is a longest standing sanyasi in iskon and uh, he is very well known for his lectures okay especially on chaitanya mahaprabhu he gives very very nice lectures on chaitanya he is uh, he has written a lot of books also and he has done tremendous contribution to this movement he has dedicated his life and uh, you see generally we give up indian citizenship to get american citizenship am i right generally that's what happens but he gave up american citizenship for getting indian citizenship that is his dedication for his spiritual master okay so let us start so we starting with the chapter number 15 okay it's also called as the purushottama yoga purushottama okay yoga of the supreme person purushottama and uttama what does uttama mean uttama means 
top list. The best. Uttama means the best. And Purusha. What does Purusha mean? Purusha means what? As per common knowledge, what does Purusha mean? Man. Or you can say in other words, Purusha means person. So you can say Purusha means enjoy. Prakriti means enjoyed. So the original enjoyer is the original Purusha. Adi Purusha. Purusha Uttama. Right? There are different kinds of Purusha. So there can be so many people. We are also, in one way, we can think that Purusha. Because you know, 13th chapter says, Atma is also Purusha. Right? So living entity also Purusha. But who is the super consciousness? Who is actually enjoying behind us? Who is the real enjoyer of all our activities and anything? Super consciousness. Correct? No? Consciousness means uh, if you feel hungry, you get to know. Correct? Uh, if, if I feel hungry, I will get to know. But if we both get feel hungry, Krishna gets to That is super consciousness. That is why he is Purushottam. He is consciousness behind, super consciousness. He is consciousness behind all of us. And he is a person. That is also very important. Why we are saying, why we are stressing here? Because he is a person. God is a person. It's not that God is uh, not there or it's not that God is, uh, there's no person actually. It's actually a person. Purusha Uttama. That's why Purusha Uttama. The topmost person. is the best person. Best person is Krishna. Okay, so we will see this. We'll start with the chapter number 15.1. Uh, there's a beautiful, beautiful chapter. This is for many reasons. For those of you who recite Bhagavad Gita, I'm sure it must be one of your favorite chapters. Am I right? Easy to recite, isn't it? All children also easily can recite. Also, uh, during that, uh, there is a special month called Purushottama Masa. During that month, that means Adhika Masa. Adhika Masa. That time we regularly recite this 15th chapter. Okay? And it just takes 5 minutes and it's a very important chapter and it's a very beautiful tune is also there. So it's like very beautiful tune. It's like slightly different from other uh, chapters. So we'll start that. So we'll try to understand first of all what's the context of this chapter and we'll come to this chapter. Okay, what's the context of this chapter? So how did we come to this chapter? So previous to this first chapter number 14, anybody remembers what's the name of chapter number 14? Uratraya Vibhaga Yuga. So what is it all about? Uratraya Vibhaga. Uratraya means? Yeah, three modes of material nature. Okay, what are the three modes of material nature? Sattva guna, Rajo guna, and Tamo guna. All right? So, uh, the conclusion of the chapter was, Arjuna asked, how to rise beyond Sattva guna, Rajo guna, Tamo guna? How to rise beyond mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance? What was the answer? Anybody can say. How to rise beyond the three gunas? Abhyavicharena bhakti. That is pure devotional service to Krishna. Then only we can rise beyond our nature. Otherwise, there is something called as our nature. Isn't it? So sometimes it happens no, that uh, mm -hmm. if somebody tells us something, we become predictably we are behaving in a responding in a known manner. So if somebody, let us say, teases us, then we respond it in a, in a way. For children also we understand sometimes. So we can predict... Uh, People's behavior that, okay, you know, for example, child will say, now mama is going to do this. So child will say. <laughs> so why predictable behavior? Why predictable behavior? Because we have some nature. Our original nature is there, right? That nature is acting. We are not reacting. Nature is acting. So when somebody is coming and somebody is giving some trigger, we are not acting. The nature will automatically come out. Right? There are three brothers. One brother is like sitting calmly, reacting to the situation in a proper way. Second brother has become very aggressive. Third brother is sleeping. <laughs> you see, right? It's kind of... So this is the Trigona. If you have to go beyond our Gunas, we have to rise beyond these Trigunas and understand Krishna. So to become liberated, to understand Krishna, to see God face to face, we need to rise beyond these Trigunas. It's not enough. Sattva Guna is also not enough. You have to rise. So that is possible through Krishna consciousness. That means pure Krishna consciousness. 
is nothing else means krishna consciousness with complete purity means no material attraction in that completely sincere 100% pure just like pure milk like that our heart should then we can rise beyond these three natures right so now the question may come what about the vedas krishna is saying we you can rise beyond these three modes of material nature become liberated by krishna consciousness by doing krishna bhakti then what about the vedas there are so many vedas am i right rigveda yajurveda atharvaveda samaveda so many upanishads isn't it taitri upanishad so many gopal tapani upanishad so many types of upanishads are there so many mantras so many vedas what about all that then if everything if all the everything in the vedas was only one purpose for krishna bhakti then what about the vedas what is the purpose of the vedas what is vedas say so that is the answer this chapter is answer for that shri bhagavan vacha anybody can recite this i'll repeat and you can repeat it shri bhagavan vacha udvamulam adashakham ashvattham prahuravyam chandamsi yasya parnani yastam vedas vedavet anybody can repeat Start with Shri Shri Bhagavan. Start with Shri Bhagavan. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Udhamulam Madhashakam Ashwatham Amsesya Bhagnani Yastam Veda Savedavi Anybody from Mataji's? Then we can repeat. Shri Bhagavan Yes, thank you. The supreme personality of God it said, Sri Bhagavan Vacha. It is said that there is an imperishable banyan tree that has its roots upwards and its branch down, and whose leaves are Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. So this is a very deep uh, meaning to this. So the thing is, Vedas and the tree. There is a tree here, okay. But then the thing that has been said is Urdhva Mulam, upside down tree. Did anybody see a tree upside down? Raise your hands. You see roots upwards, tree downwards. Is there any, any tree like that? What is that tree? Sorry, reflection in water. You can say, okay. software engineers will understand, right? <laughs> so there is a tree structure, data structure that is like Urdhva Mula Madarshan. Root is upwards and <laughs> leaves are downwards. Folder structure. <laughs> Root is upwards, folders are inside. So, computer. But that's not, I mean, in reality, we don't see Urdhva Mula Madarshan. We don't see an upside down tree. This is symbolic tree. He's talking about the material existence. Material existence means, see, we are all here right now in Bangalore, in HSR Leo at the moment. Correct? And uh, what are we doing? We are doing various fruitive activities. Fruitive activities means like, for example, going to work is fruitive activity. Getting married is fruitive activity. Like getting children is fruitive activity. So all these are fruitive activities. Means if you do this, you will get this, something like that. And we are doing Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. That means religious principles, economic development, and sense gratification and liberation. These are the four kind of results. So we are doing all of this, but then finally, we just have to remember that whatever we may be doing is hundreds of activities all our life. But we are not going anywhere out of this material world. We are just here, that's it. We may go from, maybe from one body to another body. Like we can change the exchange bodies and go from one body to another body. Maybe become a better person, better, richer person. Or maybe become a demigod maximum. But then we are just circulating. No, our living entity is just simply circulating the whole same activities. In different, different ways we are doing the same thing actually. So that is... 
these Vedas are meant for our liberation. The purpose of the Veda is that we have to get liberated. We are somehow stuck in this material world. We want to get out of this material world. That is the purpose of these Vedas. So this tree, which is upside down, Chandamsi Yasya Parnani. Parnani means leaves are Vedas. The leaves are Vedic hymns. Okay. The twigs are sense objects. Okay. The, the three roots are the three modes of material nature. I said that Sattva Gun, Rajogun, Tamogun, right? I said we three brothers. One brother is not reacting. Whatever happens is sleeping. One brother is like very calm. One brother is like very aggressive. Three types of brothers. So three types of uh, Sattva Gun, Rajogun, Tamogun. This is the cause for everything in this material. The reason why we are here is this three modes of material nature. That means the roots of this tree, this material tree, this is not a good tree. Okay, It's a bad tree. Just like when you are gardening, you have some weeds. Do you like weeds? Anybody likes weeds in your garden? No, right? Do you like weeds? You don't like, there are some bad trees. We remove them. We want only good tree. This is not a good tree. It's a bad tree. It's a ultra tree. We don't want an ultra tree. We want to see that straight. Correct? Because it's a reflection. See, if you, as long as we are in the reflection, we cannot be happy. Correct? No? Let us say if we go to one uh, desert, you see some water to drink. You go nearby, there is no water. Do you like that? No. Nobody likes it. We want real water. We want real drink. We want real relationships. We want real friendship. We want real happiness. That is what we are looking for. The reality or the real tree is upside down. It's actually on the top side. Okay. So if you can see, Lord Brahma is the source of this reverse tree, ultra tree. Lord Brahma. That means from Lord Brahma, everybody is coming. Just trace back our relate our ancestors. My father's name, so and so. My grandfather's name, so and so. My great grandfather's name, so and so. My great great father's name, monkey. How many of you agree that? <laughs> is it how many of you agree to that? Monkey is a great father. <laughs> great grandfather's name is not monkey, at least as for the Vedas. Okay. It's Darwin's theory. That's not right. Okay. So great, great, great grandfather's name is Brahma. Okay, from him all the living entities have come. Monkeys, cows, everything, animals, snakes, reptiles, human beings. Demigods, everybody coming from Lord Brahma. See, Lord Brahma is the origin of the material tree. And these uh, branches are there, no? These branches are like different planetary system. Just like Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Chennai, everything. Just like that, we have Earth planetary system, Bhu Loka, Bhu Loka, Swarga Loka, Mahar Loka. 14 planetary systems are, 14 branches are there. So we are simply jumping from one branch to another. That's it. Okay, so this is the whole thing. But then the point is, outside that purview of this tree, upside down, you can see there is a picture. Who can you see here? Above? Above, yeah. Radha and Krishna. You are able to see that here? You can see Radha and Krishna. That means here is the real tree. Here is the real world. And this is the reflection. Anything which is reflection cannot be real. And whatever happiness we are getting, whatever sadness we are getting, it's not actually real and it's not anything meaningful also. The real happiness, the real variety, the real thing is actually here in this spiritual world. That's the point. So anybody who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. This is the purpose of the Vedas. The Vedas have been given us for us to understand that we have to get out of this, we have to cut this tree. Okay? And then we have to go back to Krishna. Now let's go to the next one. Here is one example, very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Knowing the tree means knowing about the our material existence. This is a tree of material existence. This upside down tree is a material existence. We are doing dharma, artha, kama, moksha, sattva guna, rajoguna, tamoguna. That is the three roots. We are jumping from one planet system to another planet system. We are using the Vedic hymns, but actually nothing is helping us. The purpose is not to just simply circulate between one planet system to another planet system. Purpose is a higher purpose. The higher purpose is that original tree. That is so. That is the original purpose. So I'll tell you, we'll understand it better. There was a queen. This queen one day, she had a very nice uh, necklace, diamond necklace. Okay, 
she was taking a bath near the river. There's a monkey which took that diamond necklace and uh, it ran away. So they announced the reward that whoever finds this uh, necklace, they will get a lot of money. Okay. How many of you are interested in this treasure hunt? Right. <laughs> so treasure hunt, right? So everybody saw, they, everybody went, they, see there's some people who are watching and they saw that actually they're able to see that inside the water. And one after the other, they started jumping inside the water. But they're not able to find that uh, necklace. Anybody can guess why? Monkey. No, monkey had kept it somewhere. And they're able to see it inside the water. Let's, let's see, able to see the glittering inside the water. The diamond is glittering inside the water. They can clearly see when they jump, they're not able to find it. Then there was a saintly person who was sitting. He said, Murkas, it is on the tree. <laughs> You're seeing reflection. Go to the original. <laughs> okay. So that is what is, I mean, our life. We are also looking at the reflection. And we are behind that reflection. We forgot in the original cause of that reflection. Sun is we are saying sun is such a beautiful light. So much of light is coming. But you did you know that Vedas say that sun is actually reflection of the light that is coming from Krishna's planet. That is sun. See, moon is there, right? Moon. Moon, moon is powerful and sun is powerful. Which one is powerful? Sun. Moon is reflection means it is not so powerful. Similarly, if sun is a reflection of something else, then that is how powerful it is. Extremely powerful. That is Krishna. So, we are only looking at physical things, reflection, but we are not seeing what is inside. Okay, That's the deeper thing we have to see, spiritual. We are able to see the body, we are not able to see the spirit. Okay, This chapter is all about that. To understand the spirit and the super soul, Krishna. It's a nice verse. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Shariram Yadavapnoti Yacha Pyutkramati Shwaraha Druhitvaita Ni Samyati Vayur Gandhani Vasayat Srotram Chakshus Parshanam Charasanam Grana Mevacha Adishtayam Anaschayam Vishayanupa Sevati. Anybody can read the translation for me, please? In the material world, carries these different conceptions of life from one body to another. As the hair carries aroma, thus he takes one kind of body and again quits uh, it to take another. The living entity thus taking another cross body obtains certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose, and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He Thank thus you. enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Thank you. Are you able to get some? Perfume of flowers sitting there. Anybody? Little bit. Are you able to get? Yes. Flowers perfume. Flowers are here. But how are you getting the perfume there? This person. Yeah. Means the air is carrying the scent. Perfume. Right. So for example, there is Agarbati. Scent is coming till here. The air is carrying that aroma. And you are able to hear, see that. So there is somebody carrying that aroma, scent. Isn't it? Similarly, the living entity so carries different conceptions of life. So just like air, air is pure. Air doesn't have any perfume. Does air have perfume? Air doesn't have perfume. But the flowers have perfume. Agarbati has perfume. So temporarily, the air gets in touch with that perfume and it carries it. Similarly, we are living entity. We are very pure. But just like air carrying aroma, we are carrying the conceptions of life and because of the conceptions of life, we are getting a body. It's like there can be very nice aroma. That's a very pleasant smell. Right? Or uh, let us say if you are walking down the street, there may be some very unpleasant, obnoxious smell. Then maybe there is some municipality water or something like that, drainage water, very dirty smell is coming, factory smell is coming, or maybe fish market smell is coming. 
So that is different kind. Of, so there is a different kind of air is there. This is different kind of air. So type of aroma that you are carrying is going to determine what is the next word. That's why we are calling it as vasana. Vasana also means perfume. So how we live all our life is also like an aroma that we are carrying. Okay. So if we carry positive aroma, we'll get a positive body. If we carry negative aroma, negative karma, negative karma will lead to what? Bad body. Bad body means lower species of life. Right? Lower species of life. Highest human beings, do you agree that they are better than animals? Do you agree? Right? We have better functions. We have better thought process. We have we can do much more better things than animals, isn't it? Among, among animals also, there's classification, isn't it? Yes, sir. Correct. For example, cow is there. Cow we consider to be very sacred. Am I right? Or we don't consider to be sacred. At least Hindu culture. Am I right? So, there's a difference, right? Species, there's a difference. So, the type of body is determined by this. Okay, this kind of conception that we're carrying is determined by this. The idea is, we have to understand all of this. Why Krishna is explaining this in Purushottama Yoga? Why is he explaining all of this? Is that first of all, we understand about the material existence. That there is a tree, material existence tree, starting from Brahma, which we have to get rid of and go to the original tree. That's the first thing. Second thing is, how we are carrying a conception of life and getting into another body. He is explaining. This is a transmigration of the soul. Sometimes we get a doubt. What body I am going to take next life? What body I am going to take next life? So just for a fun, like if you are sleeping a lot, what body we will get? Let us see. Why cat? Cats always sleep. What about bears? Bears, they, they, they like hibernation. They'll sleep for six months. So we may get a body of bear. So six months we can sleep around. Six months nobody will disturb. So that body has got such a teacher that he doesn't have to eat for six months. He'll eat nicely for six months and sleep six months. <laughs> like that. So this is a, an idea of transmigration of the soul. How soul is going from one body to another? That is Krishna is explaining. Huh? Next we will see. It's a little detail about... Uh, Whatever we are seeing, the body is just an outer cover. You know? Inside, there is something else also, isn't it? Am I right or not? When speaking to somebody, um, we saw that you know there is some person, Bhageshwar Dham, he is able to read the mind. Right? He is able to read the mind. But can you read mind? Can you read mind? Anybody can read mind here? No. That means why? Why can't you read mind? You can't see the mind. That's why you are not able to read them. Am I right? Mind is subtle. But body we are able to see. But if I keep angry face like this, you know that I am angry. But if I am smiling and I am angry, how will you know? You will not know that. Right? So subtle body is uh, cannot be seen. But it's a reality. Obviously, no? We can smile and still be angry on somebody. That's a proof. Subtle body is there inside. So many impressions are there inside. Mind, body, intelligence is there inside. So more subtle than that intelligence is the soul. Okay? And now Krishna will explain. So far he explained about the soul. How it will transmigrate from one body to another. Now we will see how Krishna is maintaining this universe. So we may get a doubt. Where is God? Where is uh, How powerful is God? How great, how great is God? What is his greatness? How is he maintaining the universe? How is he maintaining me? What is my connection with God? So these answers are given in this chapter. Anybody wants to read the shloka? Anyone for the shloka? Yes, thank you very much. Translation. Anybody? 
Absence of the whole whole world comes from me in the splendor of the moon and the splendor of fire are also from me. I enter into me my I supply the juice of life to all living beings. Okay. So sun and moon. In the morning, we see the sunlight. Right? In the night, we see moonlight. Of course, we also see the, this light, which will never be turned on till midnight. Yes? So the splendor of the sun, there is so much of light, right? If there was no light so much, you would have to spend so much of electricity. Just imagine, there was not so much of light. We'll have to put lights everywhere, isn't it? Just common sense, no? So much of light sun is given and we never acknowledged how much sun is doing for us. It's very beautiful. The sun is giving so much of light. The moon is also giving light. And uh, there's a special uh, feature of this moonlight. Okay, This moonlight gives the juice of the vegetables. So when you're growing vegetables, if you want your vegetables to grow very nice, it should be under the moonlight. Should not cover it from the moon. So moonlight gives it that juice. Okay, somo bhutva rasatmaka. The vegetables are getting that juice from with that uh, moon. Very important. As Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita. And um, Krishna is entering into each planet, and he's staying, making it stay in the orbit. You just imagine, so many planets are there. You know what if they are in their orbits? Ask their orbits. What will happen? Just imagine Jupiter and Earth across the rock. They'll crash, isn't it? As the sun and the moon are crashing. And it's possible, right? So that they are kept in orbit. Who is keeping them in these orbits? We're saying gravitational pull. That's okay. That's a natural phenomenon. But what is that? Who is the source of the gravitational pull? You don't get to see that in physics textbook. They say gravitational energy. But whose gravitational energy is that? Whose gravitation, under whose will is this? Whose design is this? That is God's will, Krishna's will. That is how the moon, sun, everything, whole world is, you know, managed by Krishna. Okay? We'll see some more practical examples how Krishna is maintaining us. Very practical example. Very practical. Yes. Anybody wants to read this? Shloka? Thank you. Translation. I am the fire of dialysis. All living entities, entities, and I absorb the air of life, outgoing and incoming, to digest the whole kind of food. Hare Krishna. Yes. <laughs> So digestive fire is very important. Okay, digestive fire. Well, I, we hear some lectures, right? That after eating food, don't drink water. Elders say like that, isn't it? Why they say like that? Anybody can tell. Why Why we should not drink water after immediately after eating food? Digestion will slow down. Because the enzymes will become weak. Yes, they'll become dilute. So whatever we are calling the acid inside the stomach, Ayurveda calls it as a fire. Jataragni. It's Agni. Agni means uh, just like how if you put some uh, pile of wood and uh, light it. Different types are possible. Maybe uh, tell me something. Three scenarios I will say. Okay. Little bit of wood you keep and small fire and you put lot of uh, items inside. It, inside the fire. What will happen to the fire? Extinguished. Let us say if the fire is very high too much, and you put some items in that, then what will happen? It will burn out. It'll become, everything will become black charred. So, ideal is it should not be more, it should not be less. 
in this world it's called mandagni tikshagni and uh, is another one no? what is it normal samad so the there is to fire should be not more not less that is how the ayurveda has been designed so at what time we should eat food how much we should eat food in the night our digestive fire is very less but what happens we go to weddings parties we are eating paneer sabji chole sabji this that ice cream sweet what will happen fire all right it's not good huh? so fire is weak during the day it is powerful now krishna is saying aham vaishvanaro bhutva i am the fire of digestion in the body so we all like to eat food yes and without digestive fire can we enjoy the food can we eat any food not possible and krishna is saying here i am that digestive fire. right so we have to acknowledge how much krishna is helping us in day to day life right because that day when our digestive fire becomes useless we will die is it not cannot eat anything that means we are come to the end of our life now and here he is saying prana pana samayukta here it's about speaking about the respiratory system prana apana means like you know breathing in outside incoming outgoing air krishna is uh, saying that i am responsible i do that respiration system we read respiration system we read that when we take uh, uh, oxygen inside we take the air inside oxygen is taken by the lungs oxygen is combining with the food stuff Inside the blood, hemoglobin, so many things are happening. Bad blood, good blood, so many. all is who is doing? The question is who is doing? Are you doing anybody? Are you doing? Are you doing? Are you doing? Anybody is doing that? Is there any machine that you are connecting us doing? Who is doing? Krishna is saying I am doing. Prana pana sama yukta pachami annam chetuludam. I digest the food. He is doing digestive system, respiratory system. Every system is being run by Krishna in our body. You see how important Krishna is. It's a very beautiful verse. Okay, very important verse also. Sarvasya chaham riddhi sanni vishta spritir gnana mapu anamcha vedaischa sarvai rahame vavedyo edanta krutve davideva chaham. Very much read. Yeah, very very nice, uh, beautiful verse to explain us how important God, how important Krishna is. Sarvasya chaham riddhi sani vishto means I am seated in everyone's heart. Everybody's heart, Krishna is there. Krishna is there in everybody's heart. Okay. and he's saying the remembrance forgetfulness both are coming from krishna so when we take a new birth we start our activities again now okay i have to go to school i have to get I have to go to college now i have to get a job i have to get married we are getting that we start we continuing our activities remembrance the soul has forgotten it. and then forgetfulness i forgot what our last past last life has happened Clear ones pass away, we feel so bad, isn't it? We cry, and even the soul also feels bad for some time. Oh my, all my connections cut off. But then Krishna mercifully makes us forget. Is it good or bad? Good, bad, <laughs> good. Otherwise, we'll be keeping, we'll be remembering ten lifetimes back. This happened. <laughs> we can never be happy, right? Twenty lifetime back, you scolded me. <laughs> so it's enough. It's good that we forget, right? So Krishna is giving us forgetfulness and knowledge also. Another way to understand is Krishna gives us knowledge and forgetfulness about Him also. Okay, if we are sincere, He gives remembrance that please remember about me. He will not say remember about me. He will say inside the Paramatma. He will say okay, go to the class. Hear about me, chant about me, do this now. Like that, Krishna will. Give. If we are not having good karma, he will say, forget. 
No need of all this. Just now leave it separate from itself. No need of all this. Just enjoy. So based on our karma also, Krishna will give us understanding. Based on our sincerity, based on our how much we go towards God, you know, Krishna will come towards us. Are you able to understand? And uh, Vedas are very important. Okay, we said that uh, in this chapter we will understand what is the purpose of the Vedas. And we said in the beginning of the chapter we said uh, anybody who knows that about the material X tree, inverted tree, is the knower of all the Vedas. The knower of the Vedas knows that we have to come out of this material world. Right? And now, here he is saying, Veda is just survive aham eva vedyo. That means, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. All the four Vedas, all the Puranas, all the Upanishads, all the Mahabharata, Ramayana. What is it to be known? After watching Ramayana, somebody asked, what is the relationship between Rama and Sita? Right? So after watching the entire serial, what is the relationship between Rama and Sita? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after watching Ramayana, what should we know? That uh, anybody who is surrendered to Lord Ramachandra, they are protected. Right? How Vibhishana is protected. Sugriva was protected. We should surrender to Lord Ramachandra. After watching Mahabharata, what we should know? Right? What, what is the su summary of Ram Mahabharata? Wins. But okay, on whose side is Dharma? Krishna's side is Dharma. On wherever Krishna is there, that side is Dharma. Right? Wherever there is Krishna, wherever there is Arjuna, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Tatra Partha Dhanutarha, Yatra Sri, Vijayog Mutir, Dhruva Nitir, Matir Mama. So, Krishna's side always wins. This is the summary. So, whether it is Ramayana or Mahabharata or any Puranas, Vedas or anything, ultimately purpose is to know Krishna, to know God. We have forgotten God. So we have forgotten God and that's why we are here in this material world. We just have to remember He is mercifully is reminding us in the form of Vedas. Vedas are uh, incarnation of Krishna. Veda Vyasa has written all of this, no? Why? Because we forgot Krishna. In Sanadi Bahir Mukhe Jiva, Krishna Bhuli Gela. It's from many, many lifetimes we forgot Krishna. Who is Krishna? Where is Krishna? What is? We forgot God. Forgot God and we are just enjoying. So, out of uh, mercy, Vyasadeva is reminding us, okay, remember God now. Become God conscious. So, that is why Krishna is coming in the form of Vedas and also he is coming in the form of, he is coming himself, Krishna, to explain the Vedas also. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita is what? It is the uh, essence of all the Vedas, isn't it? Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all the Upanishads, no? Krishna is himself coming and giving this knowledge. He is himself coming and he is himself explaining. He is coming in the form of Vedas and he is explaining. It. That's why Krishna is a very beautiful thing. Purushottama Yoga, this verse is the Gem. It's a very, very beautiful thing which is telling about Purushottama. Why Krishna is Purushottama? This is the answer. This is the answer. Because by all the Vedas, Krishna is to be known. I am the compiler of the Vedanta. Vedanta Sutra is the topmost knowledge. In all the Vedas, what is the topmost Veda or what is the topmost spiritual knowledge? Anybody knows? Vedanta Sutras. Vedanta Sutras. Vedanta Sutras we can't understand, but the commentary of Vedanta Sutras is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the commentary of Srimad, uh, this uh, Vedanta Sutra that if you know, you understand it. Okay. Now, this is a, uh, I'll tell the story first. Okay, There is a story, there is a person called Manu. He was a young devotee of Krishna and he was on a pilgrimage and then he was walking towards Vrindavan Dham. And then there were some scholars who are fighting. Now what is the fight? The fight is this. There is a crow that came on the palm tree. That's a palm tree. Yeah, you are the palm tree, right? Crow sitting on a palm tree. And when the crow came and sat on the palm tree, a palm fruit fell down. Now the debate between the scholars is, 
ಕಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯಾಕೆ ಹಿಂಗಾಯ್ತು ಯಾಕೆ ಹಿಂಗಾಯ್ತು ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಶನ್ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ರೋ ಸ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಫೆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಫ್ರೂ ಹ್ಯಾಟ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟು ಫಾಲ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಕ್ರೋ ಕೇಮ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಕ್ರೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ದ ಕ್ರೋ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಬೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬೆಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾನು ನೋ ಹಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟುಕ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಪಾಮ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಹಿ ಕಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫರ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿ ಬೆಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಹಿ ಸೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಬೆಟರ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಅಕ್ನಾಲೆಜ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಬೆಟರ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೀವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ whether you did it he did it because of this because of this happened because of this happened because of this it happened it happened leave it now okay just remember krishna go ahead and see what we have to be done right so that's what it is yo maam eva ma sammudho okay repeat after me everybody yo maam eva ma sammudho janati purushottam janati purushottam sa sarva vid bhajati maam like son of bharatam is not son of bharat maharaj but he is coming in the dynasty of bharat that's what it means okay comes in the dynasty bharat mahabharat mahabharat so this is the thing okay sarva vid sarva vid means who knows everything who knows everything sarva vid who knows everything krishna knows everything but among all the living entities who knows everything those who know that krishna is the supreme without any doubt again asammudho yoma evam asammudho janati purushottama means who understands that krishna is purushottama is the supreme then what is that greatness of that person you know he is very great krishna is saying such a person is very great why sa sarvavit sa means he he is sarvavit he knows everything bhajati ma what does he do after knowing krishna is a supreme lord what we should do whatever what are we supposed to do after knowing god is great what we should do what we should do if we yeah, what we should do surrender serve him if you know that person is very great okay let us say you you both are sitting here okay after 5 minutes you realize that you are sitting beside the world's richest person how how will you react for example how will you react suddenly how will you react suddenly yeah. you like sir i didn't know sir sorry yes that should be realization right if we should understand krishna's position once we understand so arjuna's position was also like that only arjuna was like ah we are friends and he was joking everything mahabharat the time he is always joking sometimes he is joking on krishna sometimes he is saying ah krishna you are oh you are yadava he will say oh yadava in joke on him. sarcastically he is making fun so much. but then when he showed vishwarupa said sorry sir <laughs> sorry sir i have many times i have joked with you i am so sorry please don't take it seriously he said like that yes 11 chapter that is what it is right we have to understand krishna thanks we understand who is krishna that he is uh, not just an uh, intelligent person in mahabharata who is giving some random gyan right or is not just that okay? he is everything he is the source of the universe he is the supreme personality of god that we have to know okay then we have to engage sarva bhavena full heart we should put into krishna we have to put into full heart into krishna we have to give heart to krishna that is the most, most important point and now this is the knowledge this is the last verse there are only 20 20 verses in this chapter very small chapter but then krishna is saying a very important point in this 
again about the Vedas. What is that? Iti Mamsastram Idamuktam Mayanaga Yetad Budva Buddhi Mansyat Kritakrityas Chavarata. This is the most confidential part of the Vedic scriptures. O sinless one. And it is disclosed now by me. Whoever understands this will become wise and his endeavors will know perfection. The most important point of the Vedas. We can read Vedic, there's so many Vedic scriptures. We can go to Kashi, okay, and become a Vedic scholar. But after coming, you ask the scholar, what is the purpose of Vedas? He'll say, I cannot tell you. It's very big. That is not enough. That is not called understand. That is not. So what are, what are you after reading Vedas? What are you going to do now? I don't know what I will do. I am confused. <laughs> this is not called understanding. You are understanding after reading thousands of Vedas, hundreds of Vedas, you didn't understand the purpose of the Veda. You didn't understand the essence of the Veda. Essence of the Veda is here, Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is only telling clearly why we should interpret, create our own essence. This is the most confidential part. It is disclosed by me to you. Most secret, all the Vedas secret of knowledge in Bhagavad Gita. Anybody understand? Krita Kritya Krita Kritya means what? Perfect person. You become perfect. This lifetime, you become perfect. So become perfect. Become Krita Kritya. How to become Krita Kritya? Understand this aspect of Krishna. Understand who is Krishna. Then you become Krita Kritya. Simply by understanding about Krishna, we become Krita Kritya. Means you will become perfect. That's what Krishna is saying. So this is the thing. And uh, there's a nice verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu which says, Smartavya satatam vishnur vismartavyo najatu chit sarve vidinisheda syur yetayor eva kinkara. Anybody can read the translation, please? What? Sometimes we get this doubt. Sometimes we get this doubt. We ask, hey, what is this rule? Children also ask. In the, in the temples, we see so many rules. Sometimes in some houses, we see so many strict rules. Right? Vedic rules. Don't touch that. Don't touch this. Take a bath. Do this. Do that. Do this. I mean, sometimes it gets like too much. I can't. This, how many rules will you say? One, two, three, four, hundred rules. What is the purpose of that rule? See? All these rules have been given for a purpose. The rule is simply one thing. Remember Vishnu. If you remember Vishnu, then all the other rules are not necessary. That is the point. Main thing, that is the rule. It's like, we put so many rules like, uh, you can't touch the mobile, uh, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, play games, you can't play this, you can't do this, you can't do... So ultimately the rule is like you study well. That's what we are trying to say indirectly. Ultimately we are trying to say something positive. Okay, do this. Okay, become a good student, get good marks. That's the positive thing, main thing. All the rules are just for serving that purpose. The rules are not the real essence. Similarly, all the rules of the Vedas are not the essence of the Veda. The rule of the Veda is to remember God. Remember Vishnu. That's the main rule. If we, if we follow that, that is the main rule. So all are enablers of that. Okay. So let's see this. This is a short overview of Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada has given this knowledge for all of us. Um, it's very, very beautiful. Actually, to talk about Srila Prabhupada will take a long time. Whatever he has done, he's a it's a great visionary thing. He's a great visionary. One day, one person asked, what is your vision? He said, I am thinking for the next 10,000 years how the human being can become God conscious. And then somebody asked, okay, what is your weakness? Do you have any weakness? He said, my weakness is I cannot think small. I will only think big. So Prabhupada was thinking so big. 10,000 years. He was thinking about 10, next 10,000 years. How everybody can become God conscious. So his story is very inspiring actually born in a very pious family, in the Vaniks family in Kolkata. And they all were Radha Krishna worshippers. His father was a, having a cloth merchant. He was a very pure devotee. Every day he used to come home and do puja, arti. 
in three days. Prabhupada, when he was small, he used to hear the Aarti bell ringing from childhood. And uh, Prabhupada, he went to his guru. He met his guru when he was a young boy. He, he, young boy means around, he, he was studying college that time. He went, he met his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tal. And on the day he met, he gave first instruction. He said, go to the West and preach Krishna consciousness. Preach about Bhagavad Gita to everybody in the world. You are speaking good English. On day one. So that he went, say, went inside his mind. First day instruction given by Guru. Then later, he was a grihastha. He was a householder. He had three children. And he was running his own uh, chemical uh, factory. He was chemical business was there. He was an engineer, like kind of chemical engineering, something like that. He studied in a very prestigious college in Kolkata. Then later he used to write a lot of books on Krishna. He used to explain about Krishna to everybody. Like Krishna is telling, no, if you know about me, you become Prithakritya. Means such an important information. Everybody must know, isn't it? So he used to write, explaining, 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 explaining magazines and he used to go to everybody, print books and give to everybody. You can see he's going to everybody and giving, distributing books. And finally, at the age of 69, 1964, he traveled by Jaladuta ship okay, to America. And then uh, he went to the America, to West. He took Bhagavatam first three cantos, he wrote. Only three cantos were finished by he took that in his box. 40 rupees were in his hand. That's all. He did not know anybody in America. Nobody. Nothing in him. And he requested the owner of that ship that please give me in a cargo ship he went. It's not even a passenger. Cargo ship. And he suffered two heart strokes on the way. And then he went there and he faced a lot of difficulty. Nobody knew him. He was not able to stay. And then he somehow he was chanting, chanting, chanting under the park and some people came. And so many hippies also came near him. And he changed those hippies who were not following any rules. They gave, he gave them some rules. He made them civilized. He made them Krishna conscious. He traveled around the world 14 times. This is the place in Russia. He went to Russia. Moscow, it is strictly prohibited. If you speak about God, they'll put you in jail. Not only jail, they'll kill you. That was the time, 1970s. They, are, they hate God-related stuff. No God. So Prabhupada went and he was in the hotel. He could not preach to anybody. So his disciple only brought one person. One person. And Prabhupada spoke to him for one, two full days. Explained everything. He asked the right questions. Everything he explained. Two days. Third day initiated him. Ananta Shanti Das. Only one devotee. Went back. Only one. Do you know how many devotees are there in Russia now? In US. In the Russia zone. Millions of devotees are there. Just one person. <laughs> one person. Only one, one disciple. That also they stopped from preaching. Millions of devotees. That is Prabhupada. So then he used to talk to scientists, people, convince them, go to universities, talk to them, explain them why it is important. Everybody. He wrote the magazine. He wrote so many books. Do you see how many books are there? Prabhupada wrote so many books. So we would also recommend that you please read these books. Small books are there. Even children can read. For example, my son, Nandan, okay, he's studying eight year old. He's, he's, he's reading books. He can read books, Prabhupada books, small books. Small, small books. Are there. Every day they're reading Krishna book, reading in the night, 8 p.m. All the children are reading about Krishna pastimes. And uh, such a beautiful books. Bhagavad Gita, as it is, has given Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya, Chaitanya, so much. This is like an ocean, okay? This is an ocean of Krishna consciousness. Okay? Srila <laughs> Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you, devotees. And uh, if you have any questions, you can answer. Ask, sorry, you can ask me if you want.